On this edition of Lexington Now, a national designation for a local highway, a new housing option for seniors, and stand one year later. I'm Neil Noah and welcome to Lexington Now for the week of October 25th, 2021. A local highway has been given a special designation as a National Scenic Byway. We were there for the announcement. I welcome you to the dedication of the visitor viewing area and scenic pull-off on Old Frankfurt Pike and the National Scenic Byway designation on Old Frankfurt Pike ribbon cutting. We're so glad that you're here today. Lexington Frankfurt Scenic Corridor is focused on the preservation of the agricultural, historic, cultural, and the aesthetic values of the Old Frankfurt Pike Scenic Corridor. The corridor extends from Lexington to Frankfurt and from the north I-64 to the south US-60. When Billy and Tracy called, you, I knew that this team was formidable, in number one, and I knew that old Frankfurt Pike was just had such extraordinary character. And then the, the proposal itself, the application, when you read it, and I shared it with the governor, and he too immediately said, you know, we got to jump on this, do anything we can, need to do to help. And it was really modest. But so represents what is today so important in our culture, in our society, in our country, and that is quality of place that respects its history. Uh, this is a beautiful piece of God's country that we are celebrating today, that we are vowing to protect for the future. And Old Frankfurt Pike, as some have mentioned, is something that stands out as a memory when you've driven it, when you've spent time on it. And we're so honored in Woodford County to claim just a part of it. But it is a true connector, a connector between our wonderful Franklin County community and Fayette County community, Lexington, Frankfurt, Midway, and Versailles. And we are dedicated, dedicated to keep this grass green, to keep it open, to keep our farmers farming, Mayor Gorton, and to keep the families who live and serve and work on those farms and provide for their families with great, good-paying jobs. Thank you, Jim Gray, Mayor Gordon, Judge Kay, and myself know how important this is to our economy. Tourism is, is so important, and it's such a big thing. As you think about Woodford Reserve, you think about the, the Bourbon Trail and the Town Branch and all of that, this is going to be a great example of another piece for our central Kentucky area that will help increase tourism and add value to the land and the property around here. So everybody look around. These green fields, the thoroughbred industry represented by magnificent secretariat, the beauty of driving along a national scenic byway, Old Frankfurt Pike, this is why we fight so hard to protect our beautiful countryside and the industry that sets us apart from the rest of the world. I am a fierce advocate for farms and farmers. When I look at these green fields, in addition to thinking about their beauty, I think about the people who work on them the $2.3 billion economic impact they have each year on our economy. Clearly, the agricultural industry requires land, and the city's purchase of development rights program, PDR, has protected 2,298 acres on this very old Frankfurt Pike corridor from development. It's another type of incentive that we give businesses. As the current chair of our Rural Land Management Board, 
Gloria Martin is bringing our land preservation program to great levels of success and support throughout our county. Thank you, Gloria, and thank you, Beth Overman, our program director. Our city is not alone in working to preserve our farmland. The Bluegrass Land Conservancy has protected an additional 4,031 acres in this corridor. Thank you, Tracy Farmer. To you and to the neighbors who have worked so hard to make this possible. Thank you to Alex Campbell, Steve Grossman, the Triangle Foundation. And thank you to Secretary Gray and Governor Bashir for working to get this National Scenic Byway designation for Old Frankfurt Pike. It has taken all of us, neighbors, local, state, federal governments, working together. But look around you and just look at what we can accomplish. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. The ribbon was also cut on a new development geared towards seniors in Lexington. The affordable housing units at the Oasis at Kearney Creek were officially dedicated at a grand opening ceremony this past week. Allow me to welcome everybody here. We are so excited that you're here at the grand opening of our wonderful new project, the biggest one that AU has done to date, which is called Oasis at Kearney Creek. And I am thrilled that our mayor is here. We've got many of our team members here because it does take a village to create a project. This, this is, uh, these projects are hard to do. It takes a lot of different sources. And this particular one is for seniors. It's 96 units. And we'll tell you more about that. Affordable housing is something that we work on a lot these days. And we know we still have a lot of work to do. And AU Associates has been a wonderful partner in increasing our stock of affordable housing for many, many years. And today's announcement of 96 units for seniors who need affordable housing here at the Oasis is very welcome. The city is proud to be part of your work, Holly. We provided part of the funding for this project through the Affordable Housing Fund. Since it was created in 2014, the fund has allocated $18.6 million and leveraged over $284 million in other private and public funds to construct or preserve 2,390 affordable housing units in Fayette County. Think about that leveraging piece. It's huge. In November of this year, we have approximately 600 new affordable housing units under construction. 600. We know there's still a huge need. That's why I have proposed to the council dedicating $10 million from our federal American Rescue Plan funding to go to affordable housing. 10 million. This is in the 12th district, so we're very proud and excited to welcome the Oasis at uh, Kearney Creek here. And also, as referenced, I've got another one going in Hamburg out by Man of War, so we're very excited. Rick McCready, um, who we've mentioned a couple times, as you know, with the Affordable Housing Office, um, came back to, to council. Actually, he was on Zoom. He was with us last week on Zoom to talk about an update on affordable housing. And a number that jumped out to me was the 55 plus market. It represents 30% of all the needs for affordable housing. And so that number is like, I had no idea that that many folks 55 plus needed housing. And look at the housing that's, that they're getting. This is great, this is great. So we're really excited and proud to have this going on in the 12th. And you know, Holly, you obviously recognize that and you've done something about it. Uh, it is exciting to be here to celebrate yet another AU Associates project. But affordable housing, uh, especially senior affordable housing, which is a dire need here in our community. Um, while this is currently not my district, uh, I am in full support of this development and aim to see many more projects of affordable housing opportunities in the future. As the district representative of neighbors that, of Kearney Hall, I'm excited to work closely with Holly and her team 
to build a stronger community between our neighbors, neighborhoods, schools, and businesses. Thank you, Holly. Thank you to your team. Thank you, Charlie, or Director Lanter, and uh, Rick McQuady, uh, for everything you guys have done to see this project through. Um, and uh, appreciate all of you guys being community advocates and uh, good community partners. Thank you. For 50 years, we've been trying to um, provide affordable housing solutions and for seniors, for specialized populations like seniors, like those um, who are single families. It's especially important to us because in order for them to find an affordable home, often they have to sacrifice something. They have to sacrifice location, amenities, comfort, and developments like this, they really um, solve the problem. Uh, when we toured Meadowthorpe Landing, I mean, it was beautiful. It was nicer than any apartment I've ever had. And, and this is such a wonderful thing for seniors because this is a permanent home for them, a place where they can age in place and, and stay for the rest of their life, build a community, get invested in their community. And that to us is the most important thing for affordable housing. So we were pleased to um, invest $1,497,000 $497,600 in low income housing tax credits in this project. And I just want to thank all of the partners involved and welcome all of the residents home. One, two, three. three. Okay. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Stand one year on when we come back. Welcome back to Lexington Now. Last year, the nation celebrated the 100 years of the 19th Amendment, and Lexington dedicated a significant piece of public art in honor of those who fought for that achievement. There was just a lack of um, historical contributions of women in particular in public art throughout the country. So we determined that Lexington needed to be put on the map and uh, be a part of the, the, the small amount of statues that are avail available throughout the country. Stand is a woman's commemoration of the historical contributions of the woman's right to vote that happened in 1920. And by putting this here, we hope to um, promote women's historical contributions and talk about how important women's contributions were in the United States. I think our community showed their support and that they knew that this was the right thing to do in celebration of women and their historical achievements. So I, I think that pretty much was the uh, inspiration and the motivation. We have a very generous community, we, we do. And we had over 470 donors, but we also had some major contributors um, that really made up 80 percent of the campaign. But what's important is when you have 480 plus donors, everybody is vested. You know what I'm saying? From $5 to $50,000, which was our largest donation. Um, it's a feeling of community unity to get behind a cause that folks believed in. Voting is an essential right, and I think everyone needs to understand that that is so important and to exercise that right and to protect that right. Every time I drive down Vine Street and I look up, I, I think that that's a great takeaway because you're reminded not just of our campaign and the efforts that went into it, but you're, you're reminded about women, the strength of women, the determination, Absolutely. and uh, what these women did 100 years ago to secure a vote. Satisfaction, 
satisfaction that we could get this done. And not, not we and Jennifer and I, but the community could accomplish this during a time of a lot of challenges. And the community was focused on getting this done. So a and satisfaction. And inspirational because voting rights, they're, you know, they're under siege right now. There's many states that are you know, promoting laws to um, deter people from voting, make it harder for people to vote. And this is a great uh, statue of symbol saying that look what these women did 100 years ago. They fought, they were jailed, they starved to get this right, so exercise this right, protect this right, and respect this right. That's very, very important. Well, I think we were very, very careful in, in making sure that um, it was very inclusive. We didn't pick one particular woman to focus on because there were so many women that were involved in this fight and we felt like it, it was more inclusive and we just picked um, kind of, you know, women in general to, 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 to show that uh, everyone was involved and it makes a difference for all women, not just some particular women. Because a lot of the suffragists were, they were, you know, white suffragists. Yes. And so um, we wanted to make sure that we just didn't focus on one particular group, but all groups, all groups of women. One of the things that I would like to see, and you know, Jennifer and I, you know, gave a lot of time to this, but we'd love to hand the baton to someone take an educational component to this, and to get more of our, our children engaged in historical feats that have accomplished. So I'd like to see that that happen. And you know, we even talked about perhaps a scholarship to a young woman um, for college, and that would be a, a cool legacy to say that we put this up, but it lives on supporting women and their vision and their goals and accomplishments. Raven Run has a fun and informative program perfect for this Halloween week. History and Mysteries. Here's more. We are at Raven Run Nature Sanctuary on the site of the historic Prather Homestead. The Prather family settled here in the early 1800s or the end of the 1700s. Um, they were a family that lived here really for many generations up until the early 1900s or even past that. Members of the Prather family are buried in the cemetery adjacent the homestead. And they really were, you know, a, kind of a middle class farming family. Um, they would have lived out here, had a very family centric um, life. They would have raised cattle, hogs, probably crops, that kind of thing. Um, and there's a, lots of artifacts left around the park from the time period in which the Prathers lived in this area. The Prather Homestead will be one of the upcoming sites on our History and Mysteries program. We'll be stopping by here to talk a little bit about some of the people that lived in this site, some of the interesting historical customs that they would have practiced when they lived here, um, and definitely to check out, you know, the wonderful architecture and historical remnants that are left behind. The Histories and Mysteries program is one that we've been doing for a couple years now. We try to give people something to um, sort of come out and experience when they're in the mood for some autumn hiking and some different, you know, programming maybe than what they would think about the rest of the year, something a little spookier. We talk along the hike um, about sort of the different characters that have lived at Raven Run in the past, the mysterious happenings, the little known facts about, you know, the park's past residents. And we'll also talk about historical customs that you may or may not know about related to the people that would have lived here. And we'll definitely be taking a look at some really interesting historic sites out here at the park as well. And this will be a night hike, so you get to have you know a little kind of ambiance as well. To sign up for this program, you're going to go to lexingtonky.gov slash Nature Sanctuary. There will be a button there that you can press for our upcoming events, and it will take you to um, online registration where you can grab a spot for this program. There is a fee associated with it of $5, and you can you know, do that online as well. Um, if you have any issues with that, if you have any questions, you can call us at the park. The number is 859-272-6105. I would recommend this hike for families with kids over 10 or 12. We are going out at night. It can be a little spooky for, for younger children, and we are covering a little bit of terrain in the course of our walk. So I would keep that in mind when you register for the program. I've definitely heard plenty of rumors over the years working here about you know, mysterious happenings and hauntings. Um, for this program, we'll be sticking to what we can kind of document as historical fact, 
which a lot of the times is a little bit stranger and a little bit spookier than anything that you know you might be able to conjure up so to speak in your mind if you're looking for something to do that's a little bit different for uh, this halloween season then you might consider uh, registering for this program it's going to be a really interesting informative walk and of course it's always fun and moody to come out at raven run and do a night hike and you know kind of be walking around and experience the park during a time when it's normally closed to the public we have a jam-packed week of live meetings on Lex TV. For the most accurate and up-to-date information on all city business, check out our website at LexingtonKY.gov. Now, here's a look at this week's live televised meetings. And we continue to keep you up to date on how the city is handling the pandemic via our official COVID-19 response site, including testing and vaccination sites. Simply click on the banner at the top of our home page. That's all for now, but as always, you can keep up with us on social media, check out the latest traffic updates on Twitter at LexRex, or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.gov. For all of us at LexTV, have a safe and fun Halloween. I'm Neil Noah, and that's it for now. Thank you.